my tributes to Sri Jaipal Reddy Garu and my respects to Lakshmi Garu and also the eminent people on the panel here. All of them an inspiration. It's an honor to be here. Several years ago, I had an opportunity uh, to meet Jaipal Garu. I had taken a break from um, academics. I left JNU and I said, I want to know the realities, real realities of India. Not from the libraries, not from research, but in real terms. I wanted to know the, know the texture of India. And um, therefore, I became a journalist to actually write about the unseen distress of people. And to be a catalyst, I hoped, of transformative change. I said there will be change if you write about these issues. If you write about issues which nobody wants to know, like the farmers or the women labor. These issues which will never be written in newspapers or shown on television. People warn me then also, ki bhai, journalism ka dama, ye rasta journalism se nahi hoga. <laughs> they told me, ye rasta to hote me ko transformative change ra dama, meiru tappu jostu naru. Time waste hoote me di. Meiru academics lo ne continue change di, kadeva na hoote ne ma, ak kadeva ga du. Journalism is not the way. But uh, of course, mana patalvade nante, somebody says, don't do it. You want to do it. You want to really find out why are they saying. Maybe we can change their mind. And I also believe that journalism is not good or bad. It is journalists who are good or bad. So that's what I believe. So that's where the journey began. And in the middle of the journey, maybe, uh, perhaps in the beginning itself, I, uh, while covering national politics, I met Jaipal Garu. He was the principal voice of the main opposition party at that time. This was between 2002 and 2004. And I was fascinated by the way he would position an issue, analyze an issue. He brought purpose to everyday politics. There was historicity. There was context which, which was universal. There was end to end, you know, from, from where knowledge began, perhaps, where consciousness began, end to end understanding of an issue or a, or a topic or a problem. So for that brief period of time, when we were having those discussions, I felt that perhaps that transformative change I was looking at was possible. possibly. But that was for a brief period of time. I want to just highlight that point. Now, this was also the time which was important because here was an opposition party which was trying to highlight the misgovernance of the ruling party at that time through solutions, rights-based approach, concepts like Bharat Nirman. That's what the opposition party was trying to do and who was helping bring out these uh, uh, inadequacies in the governance? The media. It was not because media was siding with this or that. Media was doing its job of trying to say that, okay, this is a problem not being handled correctly. Let us find a solution. This is, these are some of the solutions. You may agree, you may disagree, but at least the media was talking about these things. That's why there was a space created for the democratic change which happened. Because voters had a choice to choose between this option, that option, this model, that model. That's what the media did. It presented both sides or all sides, let us put it this way. So, now this is what was also very critical from that time when Jay Palgaru was so active on the national stage, very critical role which he played during that time. The media, I don't think, has, has I mean, you know, the, what the media did then and what media does now, there is a difference. And let's look at what is the difference and why, what can be, I mean, let's examine that. Now, 
as the as the topic today says that has it become a tool there, there there is one version of course which says that yes it has become a tool which can be used by anyone not just those in power those with money those who can influence and there is another side there are a set of arguments i'm going to balance dilip garu what you said and what uh, uh, professor saab also said that let's balance both sides of the story and see where is the truth let's examine where is the truth okay so on one side there is this thing that media has become entirely uh, submissive okay so what are the arguments which you get from inside the media industry on why is media behaving this way and let me share some of those things ante media vallu vallaku gurinchi vallaku conduct gurinchi em antaru when we say that why don't you report the truth appudu vallu em antaru and please correct me if i am missing any points first reason is that media too has families ma kuda kutumbalu untai ma kuda pannulu untai ma kuda responsibilities untai where are we going to how are we going to pay the checks we need the pay checks and that's why we do what we are asked to do now uh, humbly there have been families before there were there were bills being paid before also at a time when media used to stand up against the government vallu appudu families ni poshinche vallu vallaku kuda they had families i come from one such family the second reason is that media today is under tremendous pressure from political parties and businesses who push them to follow a particular agenda or a particular argument correct but it mother sir out there this is not the first time it's happening it used to happen before as well in fact media can never operate in a void media vacuum lo pan cheyaledu if if it does it becomes into irrelevant kada so it has to be in the middle of this pressure only media has to operate and succeed in telling the truth third the audience has changed news has become entertainment well sorry to disappoint but new news has always been entertainment always from the point where the headline is framed to the point where the uh, text is structured every word is chosen to engage the audience sell the product oka newspaper tv channel magazine ammud padakothe da news ever chustar so everything is designed to attract and reach out to you so that you can read what is being said so yes it has always been a product and and yes it has always been entertainment so nothing new there also fourth reason i want to understand money has become central and the kene you know now we are not able to do what uh, we want to do but money has always been central to news news has always been a business and a very good business i mean how why would anybody invest in a news organization a channel or a magazine under the present structures why would they invest if they do not make profits how will they pay the paychecks how will they pay the employees to work so what has changed if these things remain the reasons which the arguments which journalists give and we see that there is no difference between let's say these problems existed before also but how come those people those those times saw a courageous journalism and today we see what we see a submissive a surrendered kind of media there are some things which are special to news and one of it is self regulation that is what is special to news and that is what used to happen before journalism mundra self regulate cheskune vallu they made their own rules and one of i mean few rules i'll talk about there are more but just want to point out some things that ipudu ee kalanlo levu first rule there's always bias news always has bias so in the i mean if because enduku bias undi why is there bias when you look at news meer ye news chusina kuda daniki oka chutta ga point of view untundi so it is the observation of it, it always will have bias now it depends on how much is being included in your news story and meer choose chestunnaru as a journalist you are choosing what is being written and what is not being written which point of view are you presenting that you are choosing 
right that depends on the journalist and the uh, news organization where it is being presented so bias is inherent in news in journalism therefore we have a concept of balanced news you have bias it is inevitable how do you deal with it you include as many points of view as possible so that the audience the reader has the option the choice of either choosing one or two of them or at least getting to know that there is not just one point of view there are five points of view so that meeru a bias ni counter chestunaru that's how you balance that's how that's the job of journalism that you balance that bias now most important thing dantro em edi that when you when you express the bias or when you when you said that there were so many different point of view what happened then was the bias of the journalist got neutralized the bias of the organization got neutralized and that is why eventually we arrived at truth because there was exploration possible meer explore cheyagalaru oka problem ki solution emiti anedi explore cheyagalaru that exploration was possible because these points of view were these various points of view diverse points of view were expressed now the third and the most important rule was a journalist was feared by those in power in fact to the extent that they were hated by those in power and that was a medal of honor because if a journalist was preferred a favorite of a government or those in power that was seen as a drawback that was seen as a negative factor or uh, about the journalist those that this is this this is an important a very important characteristic because why is that because a journalist must show the mirror to the government on where it is failing the journalist had to have the strength to face the ire of the government because there will be a push back in case you tell powerful people that what they are doing expose what they are doing there will be a push back the journalist had to have the strength organizations had to have the strength to stand against that level of push back from the government the ministers those who who were holding important positions had to be worried about journalists that was the definition that was the characteristic of a journalist and that happened only because of one major reason that the journalist had to be herself or himself about temptation to an extent that they had to be respected by even the governments whom they criticized that's rule number 3 or at least self regulation rule number 3 now but today's journalism is an arena without these self regulation rules or in fact any other rules news on prime time tv especially avoids issues like price rise and employment and why do i say tv is because one half an hour slot as we all know is seen by thousands in in a week one anchor show is seen by lakhs of people so it's very critical to understand what tv debates do what kind of help they do if they do any and what kind of damage they do which they do issues that create create negative image of the government are neutralized and i'm not telling something which all of us here don't know whichever side of the whichever side of the debate you are on you know this is happen this is what happens negative image is minimized opposition protest or any protest against the government are discredited attacks on institutions which we are seeing rampantly are trivialized so it's not just post truth it is not post fact why because governments don't inform journalists and journalists don't ask questions from the government so between the government and the media there is full cooperation there is full coordination ha kali se mile se done and there is also full collusion and sometimes even surrender now we have to talk about the digital media because it's been referred by 
earlier speakers as well it's very important and i am actually happy to some extent i i like the anonymity of digital media how else do you tell truth in this country and as a woman i know how difficult it is to tell the truth i i am an author and i do research on gender and women and still i am not able to 100% tell the truth or the or, or the issues fully explore the issues of women in this country so i know what it means to be unable to tell the truth and therefore i like the anonymity of the digital space to be able to tell the truth regulation yes but regulation in the hands of government no any regulation has to be self regulation when it comes to either digital or the print or the electronic media so let me just briefly talk about my research and then i'll end i had an institute in delhi it's called institute of perception studies what we do is research rural and urban distress and role of media in democracies this is if you remember that was the beginning of my journey also that's where i started hoping to write about distress hoping to write about uh, stories which nobody will care and today i research about that and try to find out how and why i mean how basically we can put the focus back on these issues and how to do it very important so as part of that we have a media research wing to it it is called read the debate we study things which even the supreme court says we don't have the structure and we humbly have submitted our research to them bias hate speech derogatory language any level of in uh, unbalanced news reportage all this we study in this institute so broadly there are four general pathways of creating perception in media according to our research for the last 4 years number 1 is subjective focus ante okate chota even if you have so much of data and topics i know kada you you selectively choose certain issues to highlight on media only mik telso the media knows the organizations know and the audience and the readers know there are 15 other issues of equal importance and sometimes even more important than the issue which is being highlighted and that is number 1 which is subjective focus pathway number 1 to make perception at an industrial scale and a image building at an industrial scale that's how it is made subjective focus number 2 risk amplification tv anchors repeatedly use certain words and connotations to amplify risk and to justify negative perception i have some examples i'll just explain how risk amplification at a risk name exploring it making it multiple pattern creation events are shown not as isolated happenings but as deliberate pattern pattern creations can also happen in in some very uh, which can lead to dangerous outcomes negative forecast this is the fourth and the last pathway which is based on assumptions anchors envisage a negative future and a unna paristhiti ni patti prediction how do you make a prediction most of these cases lo negative prediction negative prediction has a response from the audience the audience feel insecure and that's the insecurity which is be, which, which is generated through negative prediction now let me give you some examples of this methodology in action so number one is language analysis we do first method is language analysis we for instance uh, you recall the farmers protest uh, on the borders of uh, delhi over one year they were sitting on the roads more reform laws they wanted these three reform laws to be repealed so at the time when the uh, farmers protest was happening even i went there and uh, i could see they were sitting in ex- extremely difficult conditions on bare roads open roads meda chaala kashtanga akra vallu they were fighting some one of the most historic battles india has ever seen and of course they won but how did the media present them that's what we were also watching how did the media 
present the farmers protest which was happening just a few kilometers away from the studios in Delhi. So, they did go there. I mean, I'm not saying that uh, they were just sitting in the studios. Obviously, they went to the spot. They they'd seen the uh, farmers. They interacted with the farmers. And how did they report? According to our language analysis of anchors from several Hindi and English channels, national channels, the most used words to represent the farmers were Khalistani, Toolkit, Urban Naxal, Badnam, Desh Dro, Rashtravad, Andolan Jeevi. These are some of the words. There are more, but what I am going to say is these words were not used once. That's why, I'm, that's why I read the four pathways of making perception. Yala tayar jese perception wala gurinchi. Vakkasar anla didi. They were not just mentioned once in passing. They were mentioned repeatedly. Till you made up your mind so that when now I ask you how, what were they called, you said Khalistani. Because you remembered. This is the power of media. On one day, February 5th, 2021 on a, on, on, a, on a particular channel the word Khalistan and Khalistani were used 37 times and this is a 25 minute program that is the intensity with which media creates perception second method is of our institute is called prime time cracker equally important what we do is, we all understand what is prime time. Pi prime time is a time uh, during the, during a particular channel's, you know, uh, entire day, when the channel believes that the maximum number of people are watching their shows. So, that goes into hundreds, thousands. And as I said, if you put the cumulative numbers in a particular week, it can go up to lakhs of people watching that particular segment of news uh, debates on TV. Now, in 2021 September, I must say before that, that it, it is, this is a very difficult task of watching and measuring prime time. Lakshala seconds may have done juicy than research here. So, our team researched 6 lakh seconds in August, September 2021. And what did we find? What we wanted to look was that how were, how, what was the issues on which people were being diverted? Yala divert just in our attention. We wanted to really research that. 18% of topics, only 18, out of the 6 lakh seconds, only 18% of topics were on, at 18% of the time was on topics like education, health, rural India, farmers, infrastructure. What was the 82%? Mikita 82% lo yam water kundar Political fights, promotion of certain political leaders, uh, opposition, you know, criticizing the opposition for what they were doing. This was what mainly was happening. Anyway, the third method we have, achha, by the way, all this research is available to all of you on our website. It's a, it's a simple website, Institute of Perception Studies, ipsdelhi.org. So, anybody can see it's free access. Third method we, we, we research is speaking time. We just talked about bias. We just talked about balance. So, if there are five different points of view on a particular issue, it could be any issue, then Gurinja I do points of view. Onte, you call five speakers to the studio, each one representing each point of view. And you have all of them sitting in the studio and the anchor begins their talk. But what if the anchor doesn't Invite three of them and invite just two of them to talk. Or the anchor invites everybody to talk but doesn't let three of them talk and you know. And <coughs> only, sir, only some panelists are allowed to talk. So we decided to research speaking time, interrupting the flow of a panelist talk. The second is obviously not giving enough time. So on 
on a critical issue like post covid migurtundi around august september 2021 we were all this nation was deeply distressed we were all uh, trying to grapple with covid also our life returning to normalcy 64% of the time given to pro government panelists and just 29% given to anti government panelists i don't say pro government anti government as in just a matter of criticism kadu i was i'm talking in the context of covid preparation covid issues a covid management time lo how many people were criticizing the government valaki just 29% of the time of the total time and 64 to those who thought the government was doing a great job that was speaking time analysis the fifth sorry the fourth method we have is now popularly known as the thin red line idi popular enduk ayindante it's only that in a in a pie when you create a pie chart the thin red line is the only pie, time in a news debate that relevant issues are talked about oka chinna patla line adi that's all there is so in may from march to may 2022 we analyzed the uh, this for price rise as we all know this year is marked by some of the most steep increase in prices inflation across the country we analyzed 2 lakh seconds out of which just 10% never more than 10% on any channel was spent talking about price rise one example on may 7th lpg is the cooking gas we all know every household uses that especially the poor depend on it very intensely out of the 26000 seconds of footage on may 7th on tv debates which include both hindi and english national television channels 65% of the time was spent talking about communal issues the break up of the communal issues or on my website i don't want to waste time i just have few minutes can you guess how many seconds were spent talking about price rise out of the 26000 just 44 seconds 26000 seconds of coverage and just 44 seconds that 0.16 seconds percent of the time was spent on talking about prices which impacted every citizen of this country now to conclude democratic values and constitutions find no space on tv today and if this continues the very definitions which we stand by will be lost forever communal harmony justice equality representation what do they mean anymore and to some extent when um, professor saab was talking about the colonial uh, free speech and all i was thinking is this a recolonization of the media is that what we are saying today so what is the way out so this we know we have been able to measure what is the way out then the solution it to my mind i humbly have one suggestion empower the audience with doubt doubt is your only and the best defense doubt supported by research that's the filter we need because all of us have a fact checker in us manam andarki telusu nijam emito because we have our conscience we know the truth we can fight the truth and that i humbly submit is the solution that people aware alert and vigilant they are the best way to reclaim our democracy thank you